All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, share the channel with some of your car buddies. What we have for you today, episode two of There Is No Replacement for Displacement, another 2008 Viper Gen 4. That was the first year for the Gen 4 Viper. If you guys remember back, Gen 3 started from 03 to 06. They took a little break on 2007, came back with the Gen 4, and boy, did they do some major upgrades to it. You have the 8.3 liter up from the 8.4, and you're going from 510 horsepower all the way to 600. This car is done in blue metallic. It's one of 27 Vipers in 2008 that were painted in this color. We've had very Viper orange, we've had snakeskin green, venom red, this color is absolutely gorgeous on this car, especially with the black stripes, which only two were painted with the black stripes and one of one with the factory two-tone interior. We love our Gen 4 Vipers now, you guys know that. We've had a few, we're yet to have a Gen 5. Love the looks on this car. There was a lot of changes that were done from Gen 3 to Gen 4, and we're gonna show you guys what those were today. And it is a completely different car performance-wise than the Gen 3s were. So as we start it, to tell you guys, the Gen 3 Viper started in 03, stopped in 06. The Viper came back. This one right here in 08 was the first year for the Gen 4, which ended in 2010. And then they moved to the Gen 5, which was the last year in 2017. If we ever see another Viper made again, it's gonna be much different than what we're used to. And there's a lot of speculation if you know they'll bring them back or they won't. Uh, but whether they do or they don't, you're not gonna see them like the Gen 4s and the Gen 5s. And that's not to take away from the earlier generations too because they're doing crazy money now as well. It's just all what you're into. This was the first year for five new colors, one of which was Vice Blue Metallic. This is actually the second rarest color only behind Viper Violet, which I have seen the Viper Violet color. I know it's rare, but it wouldn't be my first choice. Like I was just talking to the guys off camera. If I were to spec or build a 2008 Viper today, I think my first choice of color would be this Viper Blue Metallic. The orange was very nice that we had. The snakeskin green, like I said, very nice. But seeing this color in person, stunning. You see the Razor wheels, which was the first year. For those wheels, they had some different options for your wheel choice in 2008 as well. So the 08 Dodge Viper was designed with one thing in mind, strictly performance. SRT engineers began by following the racer's basic formula for more power. Bigger displacement, more efficient breathing, and higher engine speed. And boy, did they deliver on all of those. It is known for the 8.4 liter V10, 512 cubic inch engine, making 600 horsepower, as we stated, 90 more than the Gen 3s. Torque jumped from 500 all the way to 560 in the Gen 4s, and it reached a top speed, eclipsing 200 miles an hour. 202 was the high water mark. Zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds, zero to 100 in 7.6. And you gotta remember, we're talking 2008 here. There was nothing out there that was doing numbers like that. This absolutely ate up the Z06s in 2008. You're talking about a car that wasn't even supercharged. Speaking of the Z06, a quarter mile time, the Viper posted was 11.6, which ripped past the Chevrolet Corvette Z06. With the increase in torque, Dodge went to a twin plate clutch. Back in 2008, this was unheard of, let alone from a motor, like we just said, that was not supercharged. You think now everything that's 600, 700 horsepower, you know, we're big on, on the ZR1s as you guys know, but that is a supercharged engine. Transmission, six speed Tremec manual, and these cars actually had 30% shorter throws than its predecessors with the Gen 3s. You have all new wheel designs. This car is equipped with the Razor wheels and a staggered stance with 18 inch wheels in the front and 19 inch in the back. Those tires are 275 by 35 in the front. 
and a whopping 345 by 30 in the rear for a much more aggressive look and stance to the car. When we talk about aggressive, you're also going to see the hood has extra slots, which is going to give it the benefit of extracting engine heat as well as increasing the downforce. And that's something that I always took a liking to with the Gen 4 Vipers were all of the extra scoops on that hood. It just gives it such a, a mean look to it. The engine now has a definite step in its power delivery at about three grand on the tack, yet it puts the 600 horsepower down amazingly well for a car that doesn't have traction control. So you better know how to drive if you're gonna get behind the wheel of one of these Vipers. Few cars on the road today have the presence or sheer sinister look of the Dodge Viper. I was actually speaking to the owner of the orange Viper we sold a couple months back because that went local. And he said everywhere he goes with the car, it draws a crowd. You don't see Vipers, doesn't matter what year they are. Anytime they, they are out on the road, they're definitely gonna demand attention. Uh, Gen 4s, Gen 5s definitely have that more sleek, sinister look. Um, and that's not taking away, like I said, the Gen 1s, 2s, and 3s are great in their own right as well. You have fully independent four-wheel suspension. We talked about the Michelin Pilot Sport PS2 tires. Those tires offer tremendous grip, and when combined with the massive four-wheel anti-lock disc brakes, this car can stop from 60 miles per hour in just 104 feet. This car was collector owned by Tammy Allen, and rightfully so with its color scheme being one of two with the blue and black stripes, one of one with the two-tone interior. This is the first one that we've had with the carbon fiber dash. Really, really a nice touch to it when you get in behind the wheel and you're driving. Uh, you know, you really don't think that you're driving something from 2008, especially now carbon fiber is huge on all the newer cars. The ZR1s, the 350Rs come to mind, even the Audi RS5. Here you go back in 2008 with some nice touches with the carbon fiber. I also noticed that it's got some PPF in the front of the nose to help protect you. Nice touch. I mean, the car is in great condition. Um, Borla exhaust, I believe. It's definitely aftermarket exhaust. It sounds phenomenal. I know the last couple Vipers we had, we always said it for how much horsepower they have in them. This one uh, with some modifications done, tasteful modifications with the exhaust and headers. This car sounds fantastic. I don't know if there's been a hotter car on the market in recent years than the Dodge Viper. It doesn't matter what gen it is. I know we are gen four specific, uh, also like our gen fives, but every generation of Viper continuously goes up. We don't know if they're coming back with them. Like we said, if they do, they're probably not gonna be anywhere near like this. I gotta say a lot of the guys who bought the Vipers drove them and drove them for many, many miles. So it's hard to find one in this condition. This car here has 1600 miles on it right now, was collector owned. So we've been looking ever since we had the orange one back around Christmas time. And it's become increasingly hard to find any good quality Vipers, low miles, well-maintained, uh, like this example, regardless of generation. And the prices have just surged since then. Uh, I don't see them coming down because everybody wants a, a Viper as part of their collection. And this would be a great addition uh, to anybody's collection. The 2008 Dodge Viper SRT delivers die-hard performance enthusiasts a perfect combination of outrageous power, exceptional performance, and stunning good looks. That is a quote from Mike Acovetti, the director of Dodge Motorsports. And boy, was he spot on.